Andrew, most of our audience will know you from the Great British Bake Off, but you're also an aerospace engineer. Andrew, what have you got planned for us today? So today I'm going to be looking at mechanical engineering and specifically, how can I make a boat totally edible? I'm talking about something that might be able to sail across a lake on your table and deliver some delicious goods, that kind of thing. And I'm going to show you how to make one at home. And as far as I'm concerned, there are three things needed to qualify as a boat. It needs to be waterproof, first and foremost. It needs to be buoyant, and it also needs to be stable. So let's look at those in turn. First thing is waterproofness. And when you think of edible things, quite often they tend to absorb water or what we call hydrophilic. So if you've ever stirred salt into a mug of water or sugar into cream or anything like that, it dissolves really readily. It loves to attract moisture. What we really want is something that's quite high in fat, which is naturally hydrophobic. So it repels water. And actually chocolate is a really good place to start. So have a look at this. I've just got an ordinary shop-bought bar of chocolate and dip it into the water. The water just runs off. It actually beads and is repelled and it's because of the really high fat content. Major component in chocolate is cocoa butter, which is hydrophobic. It's a bit like how oil and water don't really like to mix. And you might have seen this if you've been in the park and there's a really waxy leaf that the water runs off, or if you've bought a brand new non-stick pan, the water beads on the surface. So if you have that high contact angle with the water and the surface, generally means it's pretty waterproof. So how does it do as a boat? A little bit disappointing. It's not very buoyant, it's quite dense. And when it comes to buoyancy, density is really important. Chocolate is more dense in its solid bar form than water. So it plunges straight to the bottom. So can we do any better? What can we eat that's less dense than water and is going to be a lovely buoyant boat? Well, you might be one step ahead of me here, but we can use a composite of marshmallows and rice krispies held together by this marshmallow and butter matrix. And then all these airfield rice krispies in lots of little pockets. So let's see how this works on the water. In it goes. Look at that, like a little raft. So it's so light, about half of it is above the waterline. But if you've ever eaten a bowl of Rice Krispies, you'll know that it starts to absorb the liquid. So we'll keep an eye on it, but I anticipate that's going to start looking a little bit sad. So in a way, we want to take the waterproof properties of the chocolate and the buoyancy of the Rice Krispie and combine them together. So how can we do it? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's start with how you make the Rice Krispie composite. You are going to need 100 grams of marshmallows, any color you like, 25 grams of butter, and 75 grams of Rice Krispies. First thing you're going to want to do is melt together your marshmallows and your butter. So just pop those together and then just pop those in the microwave just in 20 second blasts until it's totally melted. I'm going to go and do that now. I'll be right back. Cool. So that's totally melted. Marshmallows and the butter. So just give that a little mix together until it's uniform. It starts to smell really good at this point. You're going to add your 75 grams of Rice Krispies and then just work those together. So your Rice Krispies are really what keep it buoyant and your marshmallow is effectively the glue here and is going to help it set into a shape. Now, because I want something a bit boat like, I'm using a mold. This is just a terrine mold and I've just put a bit of cling film on the inside. But this is quite nice because it's got a nice round base, a bit like a boat hole. And then I'm going to tip my marshmallow composite quite quickly into my mold before it sets. And then just gently tease it into all the corners of your mold. And this will set up in about five minutes, 10 minutes in a cold fridge. And after that, you can just slice it into three individual boats in this case. This will make about three little mini rafts. And usually I just pull the cling film up over the top just to press it down nice and evenly. And then just pop that in the fridge to set. Okay, so 10 to 15 minutes in the fridge and this is now solidified. So if you just peel back that top layer of cling film and then you can just tip it out onto a chopping board it might still be a little bit sticky. That's fine. Just oh, out it comes. And then just peel back very gently. 
And then once it's sliced, it can go back into the fridge for a little bit afterwards. So all I'm gonna do is just cut this into three little boats, back into the fridge with those, and then all I'm gonna do afterwards is melt a bit of chocolate and paint that on top. And like any good Blue Peter presenter, I've got one I made earlier. So I've got a few of these that I made earlier on and let's just see how this performs over in our tub over here. Now, let's revisit the Marshmallow Crispy on its own. It looked fine earlier, but actually come and have a look at this. It's got a bit lower in the water. I can see quite a bit of Rice Krispie debris floating around. And actually when I lift it up, oh, oh gosh, the whole thing is disintegrating and falling apart. It's, it's a pretty sad boat. So we'll leave that there, but it's composite counterpart is much better. Here it goes. Look at that. Like a proper little boat. It's waterproof. You can actually see under the waterline that the, uh, the water is beading. It just runs straight off. Waterproof. Waterproof, buoyant. What's our third thing? Stability. So I actually made a few of these with different shaped hulls and if you wanted to transport something across the table, you really want to think about the shape of your hull. Because actually something that's hemispherical isn't the best way to go. And the way to think about this is if you were holding a spatula. So in this case, I'm holding it at the top. The center of gravity acts as a correcting force. So if I was to disturb it, it returns it to its original position. If I was to hold it at the middle, then when a disturbance comes along, we call that neutrally stable rather than stable because it stays in the new position. If I was holding it at the base, then it's unstable because then it's going to fall over. And the same thing happens when it comes to boat hulls. Boats have a center of gravity, which you want to be lower in general for things to be stable, but they also have what we call a center of buoyancy. And that's the equivalent of where I'm holding my spatula. And that's where the buoyancy force of the water acts through. So what you want from a boat hull is when it starts to tilt sideways, more of the hull goes into the water on one side to correct and float it back up, to act as a correcting force. You don't really get that with a hemispherical hull. You get it a lot more with something like a V-shaped hull, or if you want to go for maximum stability, just go for a flat raft. In the real world, you've got to go for a balance of stability and speed, which is why you'll see a lot of boats with something that looks like a V-shaped hull. But they will all very happily bob along in the water. I hope you enjoy creating some edible boats at home too.